One of the most commonly asked questions in photography next to what camera should you buy is probably what lens do I need or what focal length should I shoot at? And this is especially the case in landscape photography because in this genre you can shoot anything from a wide angle huge vista to more intimate abstract images and anything in between. And if you want to be able to shoot this wide range of possibilities you're going to need the right kind of gear. So in this video I want to talk about some of the lenses that I think could be a good addition to your kit and also some alternatives to the more commonly known Holy Trinity lenses. Wide angle lenses are probably the most popular lenses in landscape photography and this is especially the case for beginner photographers. I remember my first lens was a Sigma 10 to 20 millimeter for my Canon crop sensor and I absolutely loved that lens because I was able to capture all of the landscape. And that's one of the reasons why wide angle lenses are so popular among landscape photographers because you get such a wide field of view. But also because wide angle lenses have a long depth of field which basically means that it's a lot easier to get a sharp image from the foreground all the way to the background. Wide angle lenses also have a certain distortion which is called barrel distortion and it's really cool because it allows you to get creative with foregrounds by getting really close to them and really exaggerating that foreground. Like in these shots here where I move the camera down low to the foreground element to really emphasize it. The most common wide angle lens is probably the 16 to 35 millimeter and even though this is a fantastic lens and it's great to have the ability to zoom, I personally went for a wide angle prime lens. Prime lenses tend to be a little bit sharper and a bit faster as well, meaning they have a lower f-stop. Especially if you're interested in astrophotography, wide angle prime lenses are the way to go. I currently own the Zeiss Batis 18mm f2.8 and I'm actually not terribly happy about it because I used to own the Sigma 14mm f1.8 which was an absolute beast of a lens, especially for astrophotography. But I traded it for the Zeiss because the Sigma is really big and bulky to carry around. One other lens that I would definitely consider is the Sony 14mm f1.8, if I could afford it. These are your standard zoom lenses or your mid-range zoom lenses and it will probably be your go-to lens that lives on your camera when you're on the go. At least that's the case for me. Standard zoom lenses are great for a range of different scenes and having the ability to go from pretty wide like 24 millimeters all the way to 70 or 105 millimeters is really handy and it gives you a lot of options when you're out shooting. Having this zoom range also gives you the ability to photograph things that are a little bit further away where you maybe are not able to get closer to them. But also if you want to draw focus to certain objects, it's nice to be able to zoom in and really draw the attention to a certain subject. A very commonly suggested standard zoom lens is the 24 to 70 millimeter and more specifically the f2.8 version of that lens. And even though again this is a great lens, I would strongly suggest that you consider this one right here, the 24 to 105 millimeter. And I've thought very long and hard if the lower f-stop would outweigh the extra 35 millimeters of zoom that I get on this one. And honestly, I haven't regret my choice yet. I really love this lens and I love having the extra 35 millimeters and I actually use it a lot at 105 millimeters. Also having a lens that covers a focal length all the way from 24 to 105 gives you a huge range of possibilities when you're out shooting. Especially when you're carrying your camera around and you're shooting handheld, you don't want to be changing your lens all the time. And this works really well with my suggestion for a telephoto lens, which I'll talk about in just a little bit. Telephoto lenses are probably not going to be your first purchase as a beginner photographer. But when you do get one, it's going to be a total game changer. Telephoto lenses are great for what they call compressing a scene which basically means that you get the impression that the background is closer and larger than it actually is. Like in this shot right here, taken at 128 millimeters, it really pulls that mountain in the background closer to the church in the foreground. Or this photo here, taken at 250 millimeters, where it really compresses the tree tunnel and creates a very cool effect. The huge zoom range on these telephoto lenses will make it possible to capture things like wildlife 
or other subjects that are really really far away like for example the moon or this squirrel or a butterfly a telephoto lens will allow you to get some super unique perspectives and by eliminating some of the distractions you can get some really interesting compositions and more importantly a telephoto lens can be a true lifesaver when the weather conditions are bad because you can eliminate the sky and look for more interesting details in the landscape. And again, I have an alternative suggestion for the more commonly purchased telephoto lens. So most people will get the 70 to 200 millimeter, but I would strongly suggest that you have a look at this one right here, the 100 to 400 millimeter lens. And the most important reason for that is because this lens has a much longer range. And you might think, well, I'll just get an extender for my 70 to 200. Which is true, but having an extender will make you lose some image quality. And when you combine this one with the 24 to 105, you basically have a focal length covered from 24 millimeters all the way to 400, which is huge. Telephoto lenses are definitely a serious investment because this thing is not cheap, but they are so worth it. I absolutely love this lens and I love the kind of original interesting images that I can get using this 100 to 400 millimeter. So that is my suggestion for what lenses you would need as a landscape photographer. And of course, this is all dependent on your needs, on your wishes, and most definitely on your budget. And gear is definitely not everything. The most important thing is to get out there, to shoot, and to enjoy it, no matter what camera you have or what lens you have. But I hope this video was helpful in your search for the right lens for you. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye!